I'm going to show you the best possible Whirlwind Barbarian guide that there ever was and that there ever will be. This guide is completely min-max optimized and built so that you will never die and you will be able to speed clear dungeons super fast by just immediately deleting everything in your wake while running as fast as possible. It's easy to gear for, you don't need those rare unique drops. Yes, you do use uniques in this build, but they are not the rare variety. You'll find tons of them just playing the game. I'm going to show you by running a Nightmare Dungeon. Let's pick, uh, let's see, a tier 52. Uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do a tier 52. Let's make sure that there's nothing too crazy. Like, um... All right, well, these do more damage to barriers. That's fine. You know, we'll just show that off here. And uh, I'm going to go ride to this dungeon right now. And uh, I'll meet you there. And then once I show off the build, I'm going to... Sh I'm, it, this is going to be a very long build guide. It's very detailed and in-depth. So grab a snack, get comfy, and I'm going to teach you every single thing about it, including how to level this bad boy up. It's You're going to be in for a very long guide, but it's going to be worth it because this is the fastest dungeon clearing character in the entire game it is also one of the best first starter characters that you could possibly do for like a new season or if you're just new to diablo 4 in general you want to absolutely watch this one and unlike those other whirlwind barbarian build guides out there this one maximizes your defense so you will never die and you will clear just as fast as them because they're glass cannons. They're they're over like they they like to see the big damage numbers, but our damage numbers are still big enough where we just kill everything anyway. So here we go. We're in the dungeon now, and uh, we gotta slay the sanguine channelers. All right. So all we have to do is basically buff up and run through and kill certain targets. And this build also works very well. Like these are damage resistant enemies, and look how fast I'm just deleting their health. They are absolutely dead. The regular enemies, you just pass through them and then they're going to bleed out. And then if I go back this way, then I will be able to pick up the loot. I can also hear the loot drop and I can run insanely fast and just run straight to objectives. Fighting a boss like this, look, he's already dead. And then I can kill the enemies while he bleeds out over here. He dropped an ancestral. Now, I want to mention that this build, it's a little different than the other whirlwind bar builds in the fact that you can stand in everything and not die. And that was my goal with the build, is because I don't want to have to dodge attacks. I don't want to have to run away when the ground starts bubbling up and exploding and it's on fire. And uh, <laughs> you don't have to do that with this build. Remember, these enemies are level 106. That means they are six levels above me, meaning they get a damage bonus uh, when they attack me. So uh, normally you would just run dungeons three levels above you for optimal farming, but I'm showing you in this case that you don't need to do that. So there we go, we've already done the first objective. Now, the, another reason why I made this build so damn tanky is because I don't want to have to run away from enemies to loot them. I just want to kill them, stand here, click the item, pick up the stuff, even if the ground is exploding underneath me, and grab the loot and, and then, you know, not have to play, you know, I don't have to dodge, I don't have to bob and weave, I don't have to... Here's the thing, when I play video games like this, I don't want to pay attention to the game. I have two monitors, and I like to watch anime in the other monitor, maybe, you know, a, a live stream, maybe a movie or something, okay? And, you know, anything but watch paying attention to the game. And this build is absolutely perfect for not having to pay attention to the screen. Now, you'll notice, look, I can stand in this. Oh, no, it didn't kill me. Now, remember, these things are abs- like, that was without buffs. I want to remind you, that was unbuffed. I did not have my shouts up. And the enemies are, you know, a little more powerful in this uh, Nightmare Sigil. This is a Nightmare Sigil, tier 52, by the way. So we just got to loot the bodies here. And look, I can just, like, with buffs, I'm just going to heal. I'm going to talk more about the build later, but this thing, it heals you as you attack. It heals you as you move. It heals you as you take damage. All right. Now, not one-shot damage, of course. Like, you can't go to, you know, Uber Lilith and survive the one-shots. I don't know a build that currently can other than Druids at the moment. So, that, you know, this build does not have that. It's not built for, for bossing. It's built for speed-clearing these dungeons. And, and I know I'm kind of taking my time. I'm not really clearing it as fast as possible. But I just want to show you, like, I, I have to show you, you can stand in attacks and you're not going to die. And a uh, funny thing, too, is these little flies that slow you down. Well, I'm going to talk more about the gem choices later, but um, essentially, 
that helps us. That uh, <laughs> if an enemy crowd controls us, we just gained 50% damage resistance. And yes, that's right. You heard me right. If you are crowd controlled, <laughs> which you are all the time, you're, you're going to be slowed, chilled. You're going to be dazed, knocked back, knocked down, There's stunned. There's so many different crowd controls in this game, and you're going to be feeling all of them. And uh, <laughs> even if you're unstoppable, uh, that's the cool thing, too, that uh, a lot of people don't realize. And this may get patched, it may be changed, but um, look, I can stand in all of this mess. And remember, the, the, this is a high-level Nightmare Dungeon, but a lot of people don't realize when you are unstoppable and you get crowd controlled, the crowd control doesn't affect you. Oh, look, the Butcher. Easy fight. Super easy. I can just sit here and whirlwind him to death. Infinite resources. I'm super tanky. Look at my HP. I'm not drinking potions, by the way. I'm standing in fiery explosions. I'm vulnerable, which means I'm taking additional extra bonus damage. And look, look, my HP just keeps jumping back up. I'm fortified. You see that border around my life bar? The Butcher cannot do anything. And remember, he's a level 106 Butcher. He just stunned me there, and I didn't even feel it. Now, granted, of course, you know, I'm not a glass cannon, so I can't just delete him in, like, four seconds. But the fact that I can just not pay attention to what's going on on the screen and uh, still kill the Butcher, you know, well, any trouble is its just amusing to me, right? And that was without my ultimate. I didn't have my ultimate up, which would boost my damage even more. And look at these guys. Like, I don't know what class you're playing, but um, I can just sit here, and uh, it's so easy to farm. And I know this is not a big fun dungeon. I'm not going to grab the shrine because I want to show you the power of this build without shrines. But boy does it shine when you get shrines, okay? It is it is absolutely, it boosts the power of shrines massively. Oh, this is a slay all enemies objective, okay? Uh, so maybe I should actually kill everything, which uh, they're kind of spaced out. But hey, look, these things, you know, they ambush us. And look, they're already dead. I don't have to pay attention to the fiery stuff on the ground. I can just pick it up and then I heal back immediately, it's it's too easy. This build, that, that's one thing, this build will bore you to tears, that's a bad thing about it. It's too easy, it makes the game a cakewalk. If you play other classes, you're gonna be like, oh god, I miss my whirlwind barb, I miss him so much. <sighs> All right, let's finish up this dungeon, and boss fights aren't like, if, if you're experienced at the game, when you get to the boss, like on these kinds of like, uh, you know, dungeons, the bosses aren't a threat. You know, like, like, the Butcher would be the hardest thing we fight in this whole video, sadly. Unfortunately. And uh, you saw how that went. You know, he vulnerables us, he stunned us, he knocked us back with a charge attack, and I don't think our health dropped below, like, 90%, and we had barriers and fortify up the whole time. Uh, here we go. Look, look at this stuff. Like, we are just, uh, look, we got crowd controlled there for half a second. We have two separate ways to become unstoppable. But like I was saying earlier, when you're unstoppable, if they use a crowd control on you, you won't feel it, but you still get the damage reduction from it. There's one enemy alive, and then the dungeon's over. Alright, we're gonna go kill the one enemy, and then I'm gonna get into the build, I'm gonna get into the Paragon board, I'm gonna get into how to level this. It's a very detailed guide, but now that you've seen the meat and potatoes of what this, this build is about, and uh, yes, I can, you know, pop my cooldowns to run faster, right? Uh, I totally, absolutely can. Of course, of course it spawns more enemies after it says only one left alive. And look at this thing. Like, I'm frozen right now. Like, normally you would explode and die from whatever that was doing. But nope, not this time. And uh, I'm just leveling up random glyphs here. Don't worry about that. But uh, let's go ahead and get back to town. And then let's talk about... Let, let, let's start with leveling the character. Let's start with the pros and cons. Here are the pros to the build, and yes, I know this is a lot of text, okay? It is the fastest dungeon clear build in the game. It's so tanky that you can't be killed by one-shot mechanics below level, or tier 60, even if you're unbuffed, as shown earlier. It's so easy that you can watch movies, anime, streams, whatever it is you want to watch while you level up, which makes it hyper-efficient and less boring to play than other classes. You, you, the way you play it, you hold one button and you, then you mash the three to four other ones, which you can continue to spin to win while you push those buttons. Alright, this is the fastest way to power level your friends. This is the fastest way to farm gold. Red dust, that's the PvP, uh, you know, currency. I have a video on my channel about that, go check it out. It's also the fastest dungeon clearing below tier 60 nightmare dungeons. It's the fastest way to level a barbarian 55 to 100. It's super easy to gear up because it does not require any of those super rare drop uniques. 
It does require uniques, but not the rare ones. You'll get like two or three of them a day if you play. It's the fastest way to farm open world quests, the strongholds, etc. Uh, you, you run at 200% move speed, which is the cap. Uh, most of the time when you have your buffs up, and um, it has a self-heal, constant barrier generation, constant fortify generation, infinite fury, which means you whirlwind forever. And now for the cons, alright, it's really C tier at PvP, which, uh, you know, tier list, you know, you got F, you know, D, C, B, A, S, alright, so C tier means it does get beat by other builds, even barbarian builds. Uh, it's also not the highest DPS for world bossing or Uber Lilith. You can do Uber Lilith with this build, but it's going to take you a while and you're going to have to dodge a bunch of one-shot mechanics and screw that crap. Also, you can't really start using this build until about level 55, which is not really that fun when starting out, especially if it's your first time and you're not accustomed to all the little shortcuts in the game. So as a new player, getting to this point just to be able to use this build, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but I'm going to help you out with that. Okay, this requires aspects to be comfy to use. Without the aspects, it can be a little bit more clunky and a little bit slower to start up. Also, it requires affixes on certain pieces of gear to be even comfier to use, which you're probably not going to get all of them until you're about level 60, 65, possibly. Uh, so it's... Uh, <laughs> and even then, you'll be wanting to upgrade just to increase your power level rather than sitting on... Like, like, when I was level 80, I, I was still sitting on some sacred items that were level 60, just because they had the right affixes. You also, if you play other characters after playing this character, it, everything's gonna feel so slow. Like, if you play a sorceress, you're gonna be like, oh man, this sucks, this is awful. So, if you play this build, it's going to ruin the game for you. Uh, it's also, this build, it's past tier 60 Nightmare Dungeons... It's not super viable compared to other barb builds uh, or overpower builds uh, because you kind of need stun and overpower to smash through tier 60 and above, at least comfortably in a reasonable amount of time because if you whirlwind into a you know a pack of mobs in a tier 65 nightmare dungeon, they, they might one-shot you and that's just how the game is without um, crowd control and, and stuff like that. Also, this build, it's so easy and so lazy to play. It's going to lower your gaming skills. You're like, if you play this build, like, you know, for, like, months, and then you try to switch to a high action per minute build that requires a lot of micro, like playing a rogue, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna be slow. Your hands are gonna need to be retrained. Your muscle memory is gonna be a little off. Because this is just holding one button and tapping other ones. Uh, it's like you're playing the piano while holding one note down. Uh, also, this build is so tanky that you're going to be frustrated if you play anything else, except maybe Druid, because they're kind of tanky too, but if you play any other class, boy, you're going to feel like freaking paper, <laughs> because this build is way too tanky compared to those. Okay, let's go over the leveling build, and uh, I'm going to be using a website for this. It's got ads on it and crap, I'm sorry, but um, let's go ahead and switch over to that now. This is d4builds.gg. And here is the build that you're going to be using. First off, you're going to start with, uh, you, you want Lunging Strike, all right? Because the reason you want this is it's, it just lets you lock on to Treasure Goblins mostly. You can just stick to them. It's just a nice moving ability. Go ahead and grab Enhanced Lunging Strike. Moving down, for, for the first 55 levels, you're going to be doing, like, you're going to be clearing the story. You're going to be clearing uh, just mostly single target bosses and elites along the way. You're not so much AoE farming right now, so you're just going to go to Rend, go ahead and grab Enhanced Rend and Furious Rend, there we go, and then put more points into Rend here, unlocking the next tree, go down here, go ahead and unlock Ground Stomp and Rallying Cry and Challenging Shout, and then go ahead and start grabbing uh, like Enhanced Rallying Cry and Strategic Rallying Cry, uh, I'm sorry, no, uh, you're going to do Tactical Rallying Cry because you want the Fury. Once you've got the next section unlocked, go ahead and pick up War Cry. Uh, you can also get uh, War Cry gra grants you Berserking, super useful early on. I like uh, Power War Cry because, um, yeah, uh, th these are your main ones Rallying Cry and uh, War Cry here. And then, of course, you have Challenging Shout, which you're going to go ahead and grab Enhanced Challenging Shout and Tactical Challenging Shout, which will unlock this next little section down here. Oh boy. This is where things start to get pretty juicy. You're going to put one point into hamstring, 
uh, because you want to slow your targets. That'll increase your damage from your gear. And then uh, you're going to go ahead and uh, pump cut to the bone up, but we'll do that a little later. Um, right now, we're just going to go back up here and max out Rend. There we go. Five points into Rend. Very, very good. And then come back down here. Do we have... We need three more points to unlock um, the next little section here. So I'm just going to uh, throw some, like, right here into Pit Fighter. One into Pit Fighter, one into No Mercy. And then we're going to do one into Thick Skin, just to have them unlocked. And then there we go. Now we have our ultimate unlocked. It's time to go ahead and grab Wrath of the Berserker with Prime and then Supreme Wrath of the Berserker. There we go. We got our ult unlocked. And then this one here, well, uh, crit strike damage, that's important for later. But for now, let's go back up. Let's go ahead and get Cut to the Bone maxed out. Go ahead and max out Pit Fighter and No Mercy. Very, very good stuff. And then do we have this unlocked? We do. Now we're going to take Gushing Wounds. All right, which, uh, you know, depending on how much gear you have, I'm going to teach you a little quick tip about gear. But uh, now that we have that, let's go back up here. And uh, we're going to take a few more. Damage reduction while berserking. While berserking, fury generation is increased. Go ahead and max that out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take booming voice because we want longer shout duration. By this time, you'll probably have some aspects that will increase your uh, fury generation and stuff like that. So now we're going to get raid leader. Just one point. You don't need three or anything silly like that. Going back up here now. And uh, let's see. What are we doing? We're going to go ahead and get Rallying Cry maxed out. Five points there. Awesome stuff. And then Challenging Shout. Go ahead and max that out as well. We have eight points remaining. Where are we going to put them? Well, we have Rend maxed out. And then so let's continue back down here now. And uh, let's see. What are we missing? Now, this is just from 1 to 55. Obviously, we had a point here, but we're going to go ahead and put counter-offensive three points into that. And then finally, three points into heavy-handed. There we go. And uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm, uh, I forgot some because we still have two points remaining. Let's see. I've got three there, three there, three there, one there, uh, three into booming voice. Yeah, I... Um, Sure. What, what, oh, um, Ground Stomp. That's what we forgot. So we're going to go ahead and get Enhanced Ground Stomp and then Tactical Ground Stomp, which we, we should have got those earlier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'm going to admit. But hey, there you go. That is your 1 to 50 skill choice. Now, uh, Paragon Board, it doesn't matter too much, all right, from, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get you, get you started. Let's go to the Paragon Board. This is the starter board, and you're just going to go kind of like this depending on how many, like, Lilith statues that you've unlocked and, and whatnot. But you're just going to come up here just like this, and then you're going to grab the glyph slot, and you're going to put exploit in there. And uh, you're basically just going to set on exploit for a while. And then after you've reached this point, you can kind of now switch over to Whirlwind, which uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about gear, because you kind of want some of the gear before you switch. But before we do that, I need to talk to you about the most efficient way to level the character and the fastest way to do it because you don't want to be stuck at a low level playing Rend when you want to be playing Whirlwind, am I right? So let me teach you the, just a quick and dirty way to do that. So leveling 1 to 50, only do the main story quest. Do not go and do side quests. Don't do dungeons. Don't do uh, old bulls farming little world events and crap like that just do the main story quest ignore everything else for now because it will be so much faster if you go back and do some of that stuff later when you have whirlwind it is a, a way way faster all right so it is the most time efficient if you just skip everything but main story quest besides the the rent build is built for kip bossing for main story also, if you're in a zone that is much higher level with lots of elites, this is a catch-up zone that the developers intentionally put there for you so that you can farm that for higher item level drops and uh, you will have more rares than normal because every elite you kill will drop two rares until you are matching their level where they will only drop one rare, which they also have chances to, to drop legendaries and even uniques. Um, once you've unlocked the higher world tiers, but, um, you won't be doing that during 1 to 50 anyway, but, uh, you will still be able to farm legendaries and aspects and all that good stuff, and so let me, I have a video that kind of explains this, let me just go over it real quick. So, this is the video that I made called Broken Early Game Rare and Gold Farm. It's 
looking at 1.6k views, so I guess the algorithm didn't like it. But essentially, for your repair build, uh, one of the biggest catch-up zones in the game, in the storyline, it's around Act like 5 or 6. I, I don't know what Act it is, but essentially, you get three party members, and you get into this place called Abyssal Descent. And it's normally a level 45 minimum zone. My character is level 47, so it's matching my level. But you can get here as early as level 32. And when, like, if you're level 32 and you're here, and the enemies are easy to kill at level 32. No, don't get me wrong. Yes, they're, um, you know, like 13 levels above you. But the items that these enemies will drop, every, there's going to be like 10 or 15 elites in this zone. It's basically like a dungeon, but it's one little area. And uh, what you do is you just, you just clear it. You pick up all the rares and the, and the um, legendaries. And then you log out, and you log back in, and the whole zone resets. And then you just do that over and over and over again until either you are higher leveled enough to wear the gear, or you have all the gear required for the build. And that is... There's many, many zones like this throughout the story, but this one is the best, and one of the ones towards the end of the storyline. So uh, that's why I am showing that one off in this specific video. Now, you won't be gearing for Rend. You're just using the Rend build to get through the storyline and to get up some early Paragon levels and stuff like that. Because you want to be gearing during your entire time for Whirlwind. So, let me show off the gear. Almost everything I'm wearing will have the proper gear. But I'm going to also pop up some text to make it a little bit easier for you to, to consume. Let's start with the helmet. All right, so the helmet, you need the aspect called Numbing Wrath, and what this does is whenever Fury is generated above maximum Fury, that means whenever you, well, for me, I think I have 103 Fury. Uh, whenever I cast my Shout spells, I'm going to basically immediately reach 103 Fury, and everything after that, I'm still ticking and, and technically gaining Fury, but all of that gets converted to Fortify, and it gets converted to Fortify in the thousands. So uh, by the time that I've uh, casted my second set of cooldowns, I've I've got over 10 to 12,000 fortify points on my character, and that's why you absolutely need this. You want it on your helmet, and this makes you insanely tanky. But because you have fortify, it's also going to boost damage through your paragons and other uh, aspects. Now, uh, let's talk about stat priority here. You absolutely need cooldown reduction on the helmet. You need a high roll of this. It is very important because without cooldown reduction, your shouts will take longer to be able to cast again, and this could cause problems. But the other stats are just optional. You don't need them. Just all you need to do is find you a nice helmet with cooldown reduction, and then you're pretty much set. Uh, Berserk damage is nice, but you don't need it. Percent armor increase is nice, but uh, you don't really need that either. And all stats are maximum life. They're nice too. I like maximum life because... Without it, I don't get to have 10,000 HP, and I think that just makes me feel like a badass, so. Next up is the chest piece. Now, this is a unique called the Rage of Haragoth. Haragoth, I don't know how to pronounce it. But um, you, you, as soon as you hit 50, you unlock World Tier 3. You're going to get this probably by the time you hit 55 anyway, so don't fret. These things drop all the damn time for me. I have thrown away probably like 40 to 50 of these from my leveling from... 50 to 100. I'm not even joking. These things drop like every hour. It's insane. They're very common for uniques. But uh, the reason why you want this is mainly because of the lucky hit chance, which um, you it reduces your cooldowns by 1.5 seconds when you uh, bleed an elite. Very super absolutely useful for keeping those shouts up. Uh, that's how I was able to fight the butcher basically indefinitely without ever running out of resources and always being buffed the entire time. This thing is just super nice, because it gives you damage reduction, crit strike chance, uh, damage. It's um, it's a very offensive chest piece. Uh, otherwise, if you just want to go with a rare, go with things with plus stats and damage reduction. And as far as the aspect goes, if you don't choose to go the unique path, it's, it's your choice. Uh, maybe barrier, like whenever you deal damage, or whatever you feel like, honestly. But I use this, and because it's a unique, I don't get to put an aspect on it. Let's talk about gloves now. Now, there's a reason why we're using Gore's Devastating Grips, even though it's been nerfed. This this thing is absolutely mandatory. Let me hide the text so you can see the, the stats a little bit better here. Um, the reason we use this 
is because sometimes you encounter uh, elite enemies that have an aura around them that make them immune to physical damage for a certain amount of time. Well, if we're speedrunning, we don't have time to wait for that barrier to, to go away. So what we do is we just stop whirlwinding, which releases an explosion, which basically one-shots the enemy. Uh, he may be physical immune for a short amount of time, but uh, the whirlwind explosion is fire damage, and it is a lot of fire damage. This thing has crit for several million damage. It, out of all your attacks, technically this is your hardest hitting attack. And this is after the nerf, by the way. That's why it's recommended. Don't listen to other barbarians saying that th these things are a trap or that you don't need them. They are specifically here to kill elites that are physical damage immune for like 5 seconds. And we don't have 5 seconds to waste. But if you really want to go with rares, get plus whirlwind, get crit chance, get all stats, um, just whatever you really feel like. For your pants, it's another unique, and this is called Temerity. And this is a huge sustain item here. What this does is that it heals you just randomly whenever you're attacking with Whirlwind, which you're attacking twice per second. Uh, but it's also, it heal anything that heals you beyond 100% of your life, which you're almost always going to be at, will generate Barrier, which is based on your maximum life. That's why we got maximum life on our helmet. Um, and a lot of it for 8 seconds. And now, let me, let me explain to you. Uh, there's a few ways that we heal... Uh, in this game, we heal when we whirlwind, we heal whenever we cast our shouts, and they, our, the fury gets above 100. Uh, <laughs> so, and the shouts themselves also generate a heal over time. Uh, when we spin fury on whirlwind, that's giving us a heal over time. And so all of that, because we're always going to be maximum fortified, barriered up, uh, you're almost always going to be at full life, which cons you're considered to be healthy when you're above like 85 or 75% life, I forget exactly. So, you're going to always be generating barrier because of these pants. They are amazing, and let me just hide the text so you can see the stats uh, a little bit there. And there they are, and uh, absolutely get these. If you don't want to get that, then you can get damage reduction, plus damage after killing an elite mob, and plus stats. Boots are going to be a little bit harder to find. These are going to take a while to get. But uh, essentially, you want the implicit on the boots, that's at the top, right under the armor listing, where it says evade grant 75% movement speed for one second. That is insanely useful, and you're going to be using that consistently throughout the entire game. I loathe the day I put on a pair of boots that does not have this implicit mod, because it will absolutely just make everything slower. 75% move speed for one second is a lot of move speed. Especially when you can dodge every four seconds. That is a that, that's basically a sprint every four seconds. It's nutty. So stat priority. You want fury cost reduction. You need this. You absolutely need it. That makes your whirlwind cheaper. All right, and uh, we're gonna talk about the the whirlwind build here in a little while. I'm gonna show you the skills. Uh, and it's pretty like you may think whirlwind doesn't cost that much fury, but we're going to be using um, a, a talent that doubles the fury cost for more damage. So yes, it does cost a lot of fury, and you need this. Uh, next up is movement speed. If you if you're if the boots do not have movement speed on them, they're trash. Movement speed after killing an elite. This is what makes us speed clear the dungeon. Without this mod, you're gonna be so slow. All right, you uh, not only do you need to go over the 200% move speed cap because when you whirlwind, it does slow you down. So by going over 200% movement speed and whirlwinding, you'll be able to move at maximum speed while spinning. Finally, I recommend B Berserker Duration. You don't need this. It only technically adds one extra second of berserking, but it's just nice to have. You could also go with stats or, you know, like damage reduction when injured. Those They're all fine, essentially. And I almost forgot, you need the Ghost Walker um, aspect. Um, I don't know why I typed Ancestral there, but you, okay, so what that does is when you gain Unstoppable and you have two sources of Unstoppable, you have your War Cry, or I'm sorry, Rallying Cry, and you also have your Wrath of the Berserker. And what this does is when those are active, you will gain 25% move speed and you become able to, you're able to run through enemies. It's such a good quality of life thing to have. You absolutely need this and you need it on your boots. Now, let's talk amulets, and unfortunately, I don't have the exact amulet that I would want, 
But here's what you want. You need cooldown reduction and fury cost reduction. You need both of those. I actually do have both of those on this amulet. Now, uh, I also have plus defensive skills, which is optional. Um, I'm still trying to figure out if this is the best thing to put on an amulet, but for now it seems to be kicking in a lot of butt, and I do notice the difference massively, because it is a skill, you're, like, you're using two defensive skills just constantly, they're always up, so you might as well buff them up, and it's not too bad either. But um, the, the other one would be um, Fortify Damage Reduction, it's or Damage Reduction While Fortified. I have not been able to get that on an amulet with cooldown reduction and fury cost, uh, however, it is a very powerful mod, but you can see here I'm using just plus 10% damage, which uh, it's not a lot. It, it's not it's not a separate damage bucket from some of the other modifications, so I don't really notice it. But um, for your aspect, you absolutely need disobedience, and you want the highest one you can get. I got 75%, um, and because it's on the amulet, it is buffed, and this is how you survive everything. So the way <laughs> disobedience works is every time you hit an enemy, you gain 0.75 armor, which doesn't sound like a lot, and it's for only for four seconds. But here's the cool thing: every time your bleed ticks, that bleed tick counts as dealing damage because it, it says any form of damage. It doesn't matter what the damage is. And so when you just whirlwind through a big pack of mobs and they're all bleeding, this thing is stacking you up as much as possible. And what this will do. This turns my armor from 7,400 to over 12,000. And what that does is, if I'm fighting enemies my level, it's 100% damage reduction. That means, if I'm fighting a level 100 or below enemy, I don't take damage at all, is what the game's telling me. Obviously, I'll take a tiny little itty bitty bit of damage, but um, you absolutely need this to run higher tier Nightmare Sigil maps. Without this... You can't do the higher tier Nightmare Sigils. I showed you, what was it, level 109 enemies or something? I, I forget how high they were. 106? You get the point, right? Without this, I would be getting my just ass blasted by damage. So you absolutely need this aspect. It's hyper, hyper important. Let's talk about rings. So rings, you want, you need critical strike chance, and you need a resource generation. You also, out of all the damage variants, you absolutely need vulnerable damage. Vulnerable damage gives you way more damage than any of the other damage types. And then if you can also squeeze it, get crit damage. That's the next best one. But if you can't, it's okay to get something like damage to slowed targets, damage to crowd controlled targets, you know, damage to bleeding targets, just any kind of damage. Uh, you're going to get a lot out of the rings. Now let's talk about the aspects. You want Echoing Fury which is your shout skills will generate four fury per second while active. That's each of them. And you're going to have three shouts active at all times. So that is 12 fury per, per second. And you're actually going to be having higher resource generation. That's why it's needed. So you're, you're gaining way more than 12 per second. You're gaining an insane amount. Like when I pop the three shouts, my fury is just all the, all, it's just maxed and it stays maxed for quite a while. Uh, <laughs> the other one is, uh, the Chieftain. So what that does is whenever you shout, it lowers the cooldown based on how many enemies are around you. Even if you get this on the lowest roll, it's still really good, okay? Uh, so don't worry, don't kick yourself in the, you know, in, in the leg thinking that you need a perfect roll for this aspect. Because you don't. And uh, just lower cooldown on your shouts means more shout uptime, more fury generation, more safety, more damage. Let's talk about your two-handed weapons. You absolutely will need to use a sword as your slashing weapon, and your bludgeoning weapon will always be a mace. But um, what you want on these is you want vulnerable damage, you want critical strike damage. Uh, after that, you would want something like damage to bleeding targets, damage to slow targets, damage while berserking. Uh, what you don't generally want is damage to core skill damage, which unfortunately I have on this weapon. And I also have it on this weapon. Uh, the reason why you don't want this is because core skill damage is not applicable to the Gore's Devastating Grip Explosion. Now, while it says it deals a percentage of the base damage dealt, which you would think if you're ba uh, raising your core skill damage that the base damage would raise, therefore raising Gore's, it, it does not scale very well with the Gore's. 
Another one that you don't want, which um, I think I might have, uh, I don't actually, is damage to close enemies. And this one is really stupid why you don't want this. The reason why is that if you start casting Whirlwind from far away and you continue to Whirlwind to get next to your target and blend them up, it does not count as being close to the target. You have to release your cast and recast it when you are close to the target to get the close damage bonus. Unfortunately, that's just how it's coded. So, um, if you can't get an all damage mods, then go for plus strength or all stats. But uh, you really want to settle with as much plus damage on these things as possible. But for your slashing weapon, take the highest item power weapon that you can find, even if it doesn't have all of these. Alright, but it does need vulnerable damage. That's the one you need and crit damage. Those are the big ones. Those are the big boys. Your damage will be hundreds of thousands more if you have at least those two. Uh, so again, pick the highest item level sword that you can possibly find. And then even if it's got a few imperfections, it's going to deal far more damage because of its higher item level. So aspects, uh, you want uh, Dire Whirlwind, which increases your crit chance uh, up to 48%, which is really crazy. I think I have a base crit of like 33 or something. Uh, so that's really wild. And then for the other two-hander, it doesn't matter which ones these are on. Uh, you want, uh, for each point of fury you generate while at maximum fury, and you're almost always going to be at maximum fury, constantly generating fury. Uh, you're going to raise your core skill damage up to 45%. And this thing will just, it's always going to be active. So it's just another 45% additional damage, which is really a lot. For your one-handed weapons, you will need swords because you want the base crit damage bonus that swords give. And you want the same thing. You want vulnerable damage, crit damage, uh, bleed slow while zerking, or plus all stats. Uh, they don't have to be the highest item power, but I would get above item power 725. That is the break point so that your uh, vulnerable damage percent bonus is as high as it gets. Uh, currently in the game as of filming this. Now, you want Conceited and Berserk Ripping. So what Conceited does is you will deal increased damage while you have Barrier, and you're almost always going to have Barrier active. So it's just 25% more damage. And then the other one, you want Berserk Ripping, which is when you deal damage while Berserking, which you're most of the time going to be Berserking, not all the time, uh, you just deal more damage of the base dealt as additional bleeding damage. Which, um, oh, I got disconnected. I guess I wasn't moving or something. <laughs> That's kind of scary. It gave me a little jump scare there. For your elixir, you're going to be using the Heady Precision Elixir. I don't, I didn't use this when I ran the dungeon. I don't honestly ever really use these. But if you want to get more damage, this is the one to use. It gives you 6% crit and 35% crit damage. That is massively, massively huge. If there is a potion in the game that gives you vulnerable damage, which I have not discovered yet, but if it does exist, you would use that instead. Now, for incense, you're going to be using a Chorus of War. I'm going to hide the text real quick. I'm going to kind of pop it in and out here. Chorus of War. Here's the ingredients I'll show you on the screen here. Uh, and this is plus 40 all stats, crit, and overpower, which we don't overpower when whirlwinding, uh, by 5% for every nearby player. 20 minutes and then type 2 is spiral morning and what that does is come on game uh it all stats by 15 for every nearby player again this is just purely for damage and then finally uh you have uh, ancient times which is plus 25 strength for each nearby player it's all the way down here pretty easy to craft um demon's hearts maybe uh, depends on how much you farm those but uh 25 plus all strength per nearby player super duper useful and because they are all different types of incense, there's a type 1, 2, and 3. Uh, you can use all three of these at the same time. And uh, yes, very powerful stuff. So make sure you use these if you're doing group activities. Now, if you're not used to itemization in Diablo 4 or you haven't reached in-game yet, you should be able to get all the items that I've listed here. You know, you might not have them um, up to 800 item power, but... You're going to find them with the mods by the time you hit around level 60, 65, somewhere around there. You're going to have this entire thing kitted out, and uh, it's pretty easy to do once you know how it works. So, for instance, 
uh, these boots here. Let's use that as an example, right? It has fury cost reduction, movement speed, and movement speed when uh, killing an elite. And, and it just so happens this vendor here has boots that have movement speed when killing an elite, movement speed. Um, so it does not have the, uh, the berserking duration or the fury cost reduction, unfortunately. Uh, but it does have shrine buff duration, which could be pretty fun. You know, extra conduit charges, basically. You know, if you get a, a shrine for 30 seconds and 10% of that would be 3 extra seconds of shrine buff. Not too bad. So I would re-roll the lightning resistance and try to get the fury cost reduction. And after maybe 4 to 5 attempts, depending on how much gold I want to spend, um, I would vendor them. But I might hit it in those 4 to 5 attempts. And if I do, well then there we go, we have our new boots. Uh, and I'm not saying, you know, check vendors all the time, but... You know, if you're checking your items before you sell them or break them down, you're going to find all of these items. Now, let's talk about gem placement and why. So, here is our gem choices, and they're a little bit different than other whirlwind builds, and I'm going to explain why this is far superior. So, in the armor, we're going to put topazes, and topazes give us 10% damage reduction while crowd-controlled. And the reason why this is the best gem for our armor is if we put rubies in, it would give us maximum HP at 10,000 max HP. It's really only, the way it calculates, it's only going to give us a little bit under 3,000 additional health, which sounds like a lot, but it's really not. You're more prone to being one-shotted whenever you get frozen in place and a bunch of big dudes do a big charge attack and hit you in the head. And uh, what these gems do is save you from that. There is the um, sapphires, which give you like a 3% damage reduction when you have fortify. But that's only a total of 15% damage reduction, which is far, far less than 50%. And when you are doing these nightmare dungeons, you are almost always constantly crowd controlled. Even if, like I said, currently in the game, if you are unstoppable... You're not affected by the crowd control, but the game still considers you crowd controlled, which means these gems still kick in. I don't know if that will always be the case, it might be patched. For your weapon, you're going to be using the Emerald for a total of 72% crit damage to vulnerable enemies. Every time you hit with Whirlwind, the enemy is vulnerable, and you're going to be critting the more than you're not going to be critting after you've Whirlwinded for a little while. And so this is just 72% more damage. It's insane. It's the best gems that you can possibly put in your weapons. Jewelry is skulls. It's a whopping 750 armor. Okay, one Paragon Rare Node is 50 armor. The, this is 750 armor. I don't know if they're going to nerf skulls or if it's just intended to be the best jam gem that you could possibly put in there. But uh, the reason why you don't use the other gems is because resistances are calculated kind of weirdly and against your favor, and armor is also a way to resist damage from elemental attacks, and the skulls do a far, far more efficient job at that. So you will always be using skulls in your jewelry. Let's talk about the build numbers. You have a DPS of 1.3 million because when you are whirlwinding, you are hitting twice per second, and you're critting for 500,000 against a regular enemy, an elite enemy, a boss enemy, stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, you're also bleed ticking for 150,000 every 0.5 seconds. Uh, so what this means is that you are dealing 300,000 bleed damage per second and 1 million crit damage per second. So that is 1.3 million for damage per second. Your HP is 10,000 and that is unbuffed. When you use your shouts, you'll gain a little bit more HP, so 12 to 13,000. Your armor is 12,000 when attacking, and my armor is 7,400 when not attacking, but you're, you're always going to be attacking, and this number, things are going to be bleeding and taking damage, and this thing will just jump to 12,000, which, like I said, 100% damage reduction is what the tooltip says. Obviously, you will take some damage. You're not completely immune. Uh, you're always fortified, you're always barriered, you're always healthy because you're constantly constantly healing. And you uh, you cast a vulnerability, you bleed the enemy, and you slow the enemy with every single attack. Which makes the enemy crowd controlled. Uh, it makes them slow, it makes them bleed. So all of these things that boost your damage when they have these afflictions upon them. 
just make you deal more damage. I don't have it on screen, but I forgot to mention you're also almost always uh, immovable and uh, or unstoppable, rather. You're also taunting the enemies constantly, so they just run towards you. Uh, it, it, you're also berserking. I forgot to mention that as well. So for expertise, you're going to be using the two-handed axe expertise. And the reason why is this increases your damage to vulnerable enemies, which is, for whatever reason, it calculates as way higher damage than everything else. Um, so that's fun. There you go. More damage, always good. Also, because you're using a two-handed sword... Uh, what you're going to be doing is 20% more damage, um, your direct damage is inflicted as bleed, and then you deal 30% increased bleeding damage after you kill an enemy. So when you engage a boss, if you kill one of their little adds, you're, that's 30% bonus bleed damage. Really good stuff. Now let's get to the skill tree. Alright, once you have the items, and I recommend most of the items, before you switch over, you should have this around level 55. This is how you're going to do it. You're going to go into Lunging Strike with Enhanced Lunging Strike and then Battle Lunging Strike. And because you're respecking, you can just put all your points into these immediately. You don't have to jump around. You're going to max out Whirlwind. Then you're going to go with Enhanced Whirlwind and Furious Whirlwind. Then you're going to go over here to Pressure Point and max that out. And uh, this, this means your core skills have a chance to make enemies vulnerable. Uh, which we also have a Paragon thing that does that every 30 seconds. But um, sometimes if you can't kill th things and a few hits, this is where, you know, three points come in handy. Also, you're going to max out Rallying Cry. You're going to give Enhanced Rallying Cry and Tactical Rallying Cry. And then you're going to do uh, one point into Challenging Shout with Enhanced Challenging Shout and Tactical Challenging Shout. You're not maxing this. Other whirlwind barbs tell you to max this. We don't need to max it. We get defenses elsewhere. There are way better things to max out that are makes the game so much smoother. I'm going to explain. Next up, one point in a war cry, enhanced war cry, and power war cry. This is where things differ a bit from other whirlwind barbarians. You're going to use, uh, well, three points in a booming voice is pretty normal, but you're going to put three points into raid leader. This is 3% uh, maximum health. Now, the tooltip only says it affects allies, but it affects you too, because I guess you're an ally with yourself. But if this ever gets patched out, then that's three points. You can just move over to swiftness instead for more move speed. Uh, one point into aggressive resistance and three points into prolific fury. Next up, you're going to put one point into hamstring because that's how we slow enemies down. Three points into pit fighter. 3 points into No Mercy, 1 point into Thick Skin, 3 points into Counter Offensive. Which, uh, this is just more damage when you have Fortify and you'll always be Fortified, it's so good. 3 points into Heavy Handed, then you're obviously going to get Wrath of the Berserker, and then the two behind it. Prime Wrath of the Berserker and Supreme Wrath of the Berserker. 1 point into Tempered Fury, and again, this is also where other Whirlwind Barbarians fail. Three points into Invigorating Fury. This means that you heal 9% of your life for every 100 Fury spent. And Whirlwind, right now, with my modifiers, costs 37 Fury every 0.5 seconds, or 1 second. And so this means I'm healing 1000 HP almost forever, because I'm always Whirlwinding. I don't stop. You saw the fight earlier in the video with the Butcher, you, you saw that I just never stop whirlwinding, so I never stop healing. And because I'm healing myself constantly, uh, Temeriti pops in and gives me barrier because I'm overhealing myself and turning it into a percentage of barrier. So that is why we pick those skills, and our shouts are always up also most of the time. Sometimes I don't sync them up correctly, but other than that... Um, <laughs> Uh, we are sitting pretty, generating barrier, and constantly healing. Uh, also, down here, you'll take Unbridled Rage. What this does is it increases your damage, but it makes you spin twice as much Fury, and when we spin Fury, good things happen, so we like to spin more Fury, and we like more damage. Now, we'll go over the Paragon board. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that my Paragon board is far, far different than everyone else's, and I'm going to tell you why. Most people will tell you to get a legendary node that when you spin fury, it generates fortify. You don't need this. The reason why is because those guys do not use uh, the aspect that I put on the helmet, which is the numbing wrath. And this generates um, 
fortify when you're at maximum fury by 21, but it's really more like thousands per second. And you're constantly generating it. So there's no real reason to spend 20 Paragon points on a legendary uh, node. So let's go over the Paragon board. And uh, you start here. This is the starter node. This is how it works. You start down here. What we're going to do is we're going to move up and to the right. And yes, there's some to the left here. That's for late. That's for level 100. We're going to start up and move our way to the right, going up and picking up the rares and the blues. And uh, I'm sorry that I don't have this hosted on a website, but those guys are kind of... I, I don't want to I don't want to make an account. I'm just going to tell you right now. I don't want to make an account. <laughs> and I don't want to have to sign some agreement as a YouTuber, the content creator with these dudes and blah, blah, blah. But essentially, the way this Paragon board is going to work is you're always going to rush the Glyph Socket. And then you're going to collect whatever it requires. So for every five decks, so you're going to get all the Dex nodes uh, within range. And if you level up properly, that is as soon as you can... St I'm going to talk about leveling properly here in a bit after the Paragon board. But you're going to pick um, Territorial in here. And uh, you could leave Vulnerable in until you're much higher level if you want. But uh, I use Territorial. Uh, so there you go. Because that's more damage reduction, which you're going to want early on. It's also damage to close enemies. Again, the, the close enemies thing kind of sucks, but there's no other real alternative to this. You're just going to have to use it. It's a lot of damage early on, and so you want it. So here's here's the first Paragon board. All right, I'm going to... I wish I could kind of zoom it not so far in, but I'm just going to slowly scroll it up so you, you get the gist. And then towards the end of our leveling, we would come down here and get these. They're just little extra points. But there you go. Go ahead and feel free to copy that. All right, and next board, this board is called, uh, what is this board called? This is the Weapon Master Board, and we're going to rotate it so that the Legendary node is in the top left corner. That's very important, okay? So once you get to this node, this is the path you'll take. You're going to uh, immediately go to the right here, and then go up, and you're going to be getting every magic node within range because you're going to be using the Glyph Socket of Marshall. And the reason why is because of the shout skill, it reduces the cooldown. It's kind of a weaker node, so at this part, um, you know, you should already be one-shotting and speed clearing everything anyway. So it's totally fine to have this as your second board, trust me on this. But you're going to um, essentially go to the left here and pick up the hunter-killer rare node. And then you're also going to pick up this magic node for movement speed after killing an elite. And then once you're doing that, you're going to go to the right, you know, get your iron strength and all these other little fun ones. And then you're going to go to the right for the next board. Now, this board is the Warbringer. This is what every single Whirlwind Barbarian guide will tell you to get. And they have this weird convoluted way where they go all the way over here and pick up these Maximum Fury nodes, which is stupid. I'm going to tell you right now, that's an absolutely idiotic choice. By picking up these Maximum Fury nodes... What that does is it raises your maximum fury, which sounds good on paper, but it is not good. The reason it is not good is because when you hit maximum fury, that is how you generate fortify. That is how you start healing over time. That is how a bunch of systems kick in to keep you from dying. So by raising your maximum fury, by going over here to get the Warbringer node and passing through Hungering Fury, you're kind of gimping your character at the cost of precious paragon points uh so and again you don't need this warbringer at all 75 fury you gain 1240 fortify it sounds like a lot of fortify uh, th that's half a second's worth of fortify i can step outside I i'll show you i'll step outside of town not even in combat with fury degeneration if i can you know i wish you could gallop in town damn it i really wish you could can i please leave town wow this is a big town uh, <laughs> like, just not even being in combat, my my uh, my fortify is going to rapidly drop. But just casting my shout spells, you're going to see how much fortify I generate in it and how fast, okay? I thought I might have showed this during the, the, the dungeon demoing, but it's so ridiculous. Okay, so we're not in combat. Hello, jump off the horse. And look, right now, 10,000 life. Let's just cast our shout spells. Look at my fortify. Now, it is going up and down, okay? And it's already 2,000, 2,500, 3,000. And if I was in combat, that would hit 6,000 plus, right? There's also a guy over here. 
uh, you know, doing a little something something. But uh, <laughs> there you go. You know, and, and, and again, I can I can keep casting these indefinitely, even though I'm out of combat and losing Fortify, which it does not go down if you've been in combat in the last, like, minute or so. Uh, it's just a completely worthless and garbage node. Don't follow those guides that tell you to get this, because you shouldn't. Anyway, so you're going to pick up the Warbringer Paragon board, and you're going to rotate it till it kind of looks like this in the middle. Uh, the glyph will be the closest to you, and you're going to socket it with Wrath. And uh, that's just way more damage with core skills, which, again, it doesn't help our Gore's gloves, but it, it can't be helped. Uh, and you're going to just just follow my pattern here. I'm just going to be slow for you. Just kind of scroll up like this. And you're basically, you're getting all the dex nodes because it's, it's a, you know, dex node bonus. And there we go. And then you're going to immediately move up to the next board. And this board is the decimator board and you're going to rotate it till it's at the top middle here uh, which puts you closest to the glyph which you're going to use imbiber which means you deal additional damage while healthy 106.9 percent this is a massive massive damage boost okay super huge damage boost and uh, you're just going to follow the path that i show here just kind of go up into the right and then you're going to pick up all of these beautiful nodes and um, you can actually kind of wait to get these damage reduction on uh, from vulnerable enemies. It doesn't help that much uh, if you want, or you can pick them up now. It's it's whatever you want to do. You're also going to get demolish, which is vulnerable damage. Very good stuff. And then you're going to move upwards from here. And you're going to also grab the pillage, you know, for armor and vuln damage. Armor is very good. Uh, <laughs> always get the armor notes. Uh, then you're going to go to the next board, and the next board. This one is called Bone Breaker, and you're going to rotate it until the Bone Breaker is in the bottom left corner of the board. From there, you're going to follow this path to grab the Glyph Socket of Exploit. And uh, this basically just makes one enemy vulnerable for three seconds if you hit them, but it can't happen once every 20 seconds. But we have our skill trees, you know, passive that also does vulnerable, so we're good. This is just extra vulnerable damage insurance. And uh, you're going to grab all the dex nodes within range. You're also going to come up here and grab Vigor. And uh, yeah, there you go. Now at this point, you're going to diverge down here. And you're going to grab the inner strength nodes, which gives you damage while fortified and damage while healthy. Uh, damage while healthy, damage while fortified, all good stuff to have. And then you're going to go up to the next board. The final board, by the way. Yes, this is a six-board Paragon board. Um, and you're going to do Flawless Technique, and it's going to be put in kind of the middle and left side of the board. So, so rotate it till it's kind of in the middle left. And then you're going to uh, cross over the Havoc node here for crit strike damage and physical damage. Physical damage does not help our Gore's gloves, unfortunately, but can't be helped. You're going to go up for the final glyph socket, which is disembowel. This is damage over time. This is where your bleeds will really start kicking in and really hurting bad. But also, this this node uh, gives you cooldown reduction if you kill a bleeding enemy. Which when you when an enemy bleeds out, they are considered killed while bleeding, and uh, that can reduce your shout cooldowns even more so. You won't really get this until the late 90s anyway, so uh, again, it's, it doesn't help that much. You already have plenty of cooldown reduction without it, so it is not necessary. It's just, hey, you're about to be level 100, you might as well pick this up. And then you just grab everything else around it, like Brash here, damage reduction from close enemies, damage reduction. And then, um, you know, if you, if you, want, if you saved or, or you didn't spend your points on these blue nodes for damage reduction, you can finally go pick those up, and then, of course... You know, for your final level 99 points, you would come here and then uh, just 1, 2, 3, 4. That's max, that's 8% max life. That's a lot. That's, a, that's a, you know, 150 armor also. Pretty damn good points. Uh, you could also maybe not pick up this, this willpower node until the very end. That's what I did because it's just plus 15 willpower, which doesn't sound like much. But willpower is healing received which we do a lot of self-healing, and it's resource generation. Remember, we have resource generation on our rings, uh, and so our willpower, having high willpower does help with that too. And that is the Paragon board. Now let's talk about how all of this is going to fall into place. 
And that route looks like this. From levels 1 to 50, you're going to use the Rin build outlined earlier to speed clear bosses and advance the story. You're only doing main story quest. From 50 to 55, you're going to unlock world tier 3, and then you're going to farm the PvP zone chest for a decent weapon. Let me show you how to do that. So on my channel, I have a video that's called The Fastest Way to Farm Red Dust, Diablo 4. And it's this is the thumbnail. It is 20,000 PvP shards in 5 minutes. And the way this works is you're not so much farming the shards for gear. You're farming the PvP flagged chests so you can get a nice weapon upgrade, which is the fastest way to get a good weapon upgrade because it's just opening chests. You don't have to kill anything. You don't have to do a quest or a dungeon or any of the sort. You just open chests and you're going to get a sacred so two-handed sword probably in the first 6 to 10 minutes. And most likely it'll be high item level because it's the PvP zone. But if not, you just keep farming it. And uh, that's how you get your starter weapon. So you can just blast through everything else. This works with all characters, not just Barbarian. I also have a one hour video here that shows exactly what I do and how I do it. And the, the method that I use, it gives me a fresh zone every time. So there's no players there to gank me. And there's every chest will be up constantly. It's basically uh, like if you play Diablo 2... You know, the, the Act 3, like, uber chest farming? It's kind of what this is like. Um, and then, of course, I spent 750,000 PvP red dust uh, on to show you just what, what that's like. But um, go ahead and check those videos out for more info. Now, use the weapon that you get after you've hit World Tier 3 to switch to the Whirlwind build around level 55. You could probably do it sooner. Uh, from 55 to 60, do... Only do Nightmare Sigils uh, to level your glyphs up. To get your first Nightmare Sigils, you have to do... Uh, it's like the dead tree thing. I forget the name, but um, essentially... Here, I'll show you the map. Uh, it's called the Tree of Whispers. Yes, Tree of Whispers. You do 10 Grim Favors, and you'll get your first two Nightmare Sigils from that. And then you, you'll find Nightmare Sigils inside of Nightmare Sigil maps. So they, they just propagate forever. And eventually you can craft them, but you just do any of these little, like, colored marked things here. And if you're doing the PvP zone, well, there's five points, you know, there's three more, and then you're gonna do, there's one there. You go to the next PvP zone, there's five more, you know, three more. You're gonna, you're going to eventually fill up your Grim Favors just by running around and doing the dungeons, doing the PvP stuff anyway, as outlined on the screen here. Next up, uh, around level 60, you can actually do the capstone for World Tier 4. Um, below 60, it's a little bit harder. If you have friends or if you just want to ask in trade chat, hey, can someone help me do the capstone dungeon? Then there you go. You can do it before 60. And you want to unlock world tier 4 as soon as possible so you can start getting ancestral drops. And at level 60, once you have world tier 4 unlocked, start doing Helltide for crafting. You'll, you'll need a bunch of Helltides uh, so that you can acquire a material which uh, I'm going to hide the text here. The material is called uh, Forgotten Souls. You're going to burn through hundreds of these crafting, so stock up while you can, okay? Uh, make sure you have plenty of those from Helltides. Helltides are also, it's okay for gear and XP anyway. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, if you don't have a good weapon upgrade that's ancestral, go do the PvP zone grind again. You're going to get a sword pretty quick, though. Then, from 65 to 90, do Nightmare Sigil Dungeons and level your glyphs. All of the glyphs that you'll be using, all six of them, will be max level long before you hit level 90. But level up other glyphs anyway, because you're going to at some point want to switch builds for like a PvP build, or a Lilith, Uber Lilith farming build, world boss slaying build, all that kind of fun stuff, right? And from 90 to 100, you're going to do Nightmare Sigils, by infinitely resetting a blind burrows. This might be patched, but I have a video on my channel. I know I'm shilling a bunch of my other videos here today, but um, I do have a video on my channel uh, somewhere. It's, um, well, I'll, I'll just show you a little behind the scenes screen here. And uh, let's see if that's showing up correctly. It's the how to dupe tier 100 maps and have infinite attempts or the instant reset loop, 200K XP every minute. And uh, you're going to get more than 200 XP if you're doing Nightmare Sigils. That video shows how to, how to perm a regular dungeon. Again, this could be patched by the, time, uh, by the time you're watching this. I don't know. 
uh, and Blizzard does what Blizzard does. But other than that, from 91 to 100, you can expect one level around every one and a half to two hours. It really depends on how focused you are and all that kind of fun stuff and your gear and whatnot. And uh, here's the thing, too. Once you can zoom around and one-shot everything and not die, this is the time at any level when you're going to go around the entire world, get all the Lilith statues, and do all your renown rewards. You may not think that they're very useful, but they are. They're absolutely useful. So, renown rewards. You're going to go and get all the waypoints. You're going to get all the strongholds beaten. All right? Super easy as a whirlwind barb. Everything just melts, okay? And then you're going to discover all the areas, and you're going to do all the altars of Lilith. Next up, you're going to, what you're going to do, because that won't be enough to get your four paragon points, which you absolutely need, you're going to do side quests. But you're going to do side quests until the side quests involve doing a side dungeon. So this way you kill two birds with one stone. You do the quest inside the dungeon, so you complete the dungeon and the quest at the same time. And uh, once you've done that, stop doing quests, because there are certain quests in this game that will drop rare items where the, um, the uh, attributes on the item cannot normally be generated. So you only want to do those quests at level 100 to get the best possible drops. But by doing all the altars of Lilith, not only do you boost your stats, some of the altars of Lilith in the dry steps give you paragon points which is insane for uh, growing your character. You, you need to do this for every zone. This is going to take, it took me two and a half hours per zone. So this was a 12 and a half hour like task to do, but it is basically like having five entire levels, which um, would take like 10 hours if you're speed running dungeons. So it's kind of a pain in the ass, but you gotta do it. You gotta get it done. And that is how to maximize the power of your character. Finally, if you still want to farm items, all your glyphs are leveled up, and you just want to improve items by just farming, or farming gold even, uh, here's how to do it. You can do the PvP zone chests by just resetting that every 6 to 7 minutes. That's a full inventory plus 8 to 12 gambles. Uh, so it's like an inventory and a half every 6 to 7 minutes. Uh, whereas, uh, the Sirocco Caverns, Mercy's Reach, and Ironhold, you can get about 25 rares in about 3 minutes doing those dungeons. And that's just running them normally, not as a Nightmare Sigil dungeon or anything of the sort. Uh, so don't worry about that. And, uh, there you go. That is, you know, the best way to farm items if you want to min-max and get perfect rolls and so on and so forth. And then at this point, you're going to be level 100. You're going to have like almost full best in slot for your whirlwind build. And the only thing that's left to do is farm items for other builds. Like Hammer of the Ancients is the best build for PvP. It's also the best build to kill Uber Lilith and world bosses. And even attempt tier 100 Nightmare Sigil Dungeons. Uh, which I am working on a build for that, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. But Blizzard's been a little weird with this skill. They, they nerfed it, and then they unnerfed it, and then I'm waiting at least a week or two until I finalize it because I don't know if it's getting nerfed. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but this is currently the highest way to deal burst damage safely in the entire game as a Barbarian. So look forward to that at some point. It might take me a while because I do put a lot of effort and work and research and grinding time into making sure this happens. Uh, with that said, if you have any questions about this build or if you have a way to possibly improve the build that's practical for what it's used for, then please leave a comment. I read every single comment. Uh, I have no life and no friends and <laughs> nothing else to do. And man, that's some boiling water right there. That's some big bouncy water. Um, <laughs> uh, but with that said, also, you know, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss more, you know, deep dive videos, Diablo 4 stuff. And um, on the right side of your screen, there is a video that you should absolutely click. But before I tell you what will happen if you don't click it, down here where my cursor is bouncing, there is a join button. This is YouTube channel membership. It's like on Twitch, 
you can pay 5 bucks a month and support me. This will give you access to private, more personal videos. And if, let's say I find a really good exploit or something game-breaking, that's where I would post it. Currently on Diablo 4, I don't have anything there for channel members. I just have personal videos and Albion Online videos um, currently. But you never know in the future. If you just want to support me, like if this build guide really helped you out, and you're some big head honcho with a really nice job and lots of expendable monies, then click the join button. Help me out, I guess. I don't know. It lets me, if at least two of you guys do it, I get to eat one rotisserie chicken that month, and that's really cool. So I appreciate the rotisserie chickens. Now, I appreciate you watching, and um, on the right side of your screen, there's a video that you should absolutely click. If you don't click that video, your shoelaces are going to go become untied. Yes, I know I said that weird, but you get what I'm saying.